me close. Let your love surround me. Bring me near. Draw me to your side. Lord, and as I wait, I'll rise up like an eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on. By the power of your love. Come on, sing with me now. Hold me close. Let your love surround me. Come on, sing as we bring me near. Me near. Draw me to your side, Lord, and as I wait, I rise up like an eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on by the power of your love. Come on, just sing that song to the Lord this morning. Hold me close. Let your love surround me. God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you, Lord God. Oh, God, we magnify you. We extol you, Lord God, for you are exalted on high. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy of all praise, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you for this day which you have blessed us with, oh, God. And, Lord, as I stand in the midst in front of your people, Lord, to declare your word, Oh, God, I pray that, Lord, you will have preeminence. Lord, I pray that you will move by your spirit, oh, God. Lord, I pray that your presence, oh, God, will be evident in this house, in this, in this sanctuary, oh, God. Oh, God, I pray that your word will go forth with clarity, oh, Father, and that it will pierce the hearts of your people, that it will minister to every need, every situation, Lord God. Move by your spirit right now, Father, from the pulpit to the pure. And, oh, God, I pray that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers, oh, God. Sanctify me afresh. Consecrate me afresh, Lord God. And use me, oh, God, as a vessel, Lord God, as a vessel meet for your dwelling. And I say thanks in Jesus' name. Praise God. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Bless the Lord, somebody. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. We command our mind to bless him. We command our mind to praise him. Hallelujah. We got to bring uh, uh, the, 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 our attention, our spirit uh, 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 to the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Glory to God. Come on, let us block out, block out the distraction. Hallelujah. 
Let us focus on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God for our desires to see him. Our desires to look upon his face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus this morning. Glory to God. Look full in his wonderful face. Hallelujah. The things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the reason why we close our eyes when we pray. Isn't that right? There's a reason why we close our eyes. Because then instead of seeing all the distraction, we are seeing him. Our focus, our attention is upon him. And so when we come into worship, it's important that we're blocking out uh, 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 what is around us, the distraction. And we are seeing God. We're, we're tuning into the presence of God. Glory to God. I thank God for this privilege to be able to stand in your presence. Thank God for my husband, my pastor, which affords me this opportunity. And it's an honor to be able to share with you. I do not take this lightly. Glory to God. I remember, I, I've shared this with you several times about one of my most difficult time in ministry, one of my most difficult time when the church was going through in, in our early years, um, one of those days when uh, the battle was on and, and um, it just seemed, for those days I used to sing those songs uh, about the dark clouds, uh, the uh, cover the sky. What's that song? Uh, those are dark clouds. Um, I will keep trusting my Lord. He never fails. I keep trusting my Lord. He never fails. He's a faithful friend. Such a faithful friend. I can count on him. To the very end, do the dark clouds darken the sky on the heavenly trail? I just keep trusting my Lord, He never fails. Don't tell me you've forgotten that already. But I, I used to, I was in a place where those songs would just give me great comfort. And I remember going into church that Sunday morning, knowing that the battle was raging. Have you ever been at that place? Have you ever been at that place? You have not, never experienced warfare, spiritual warfare? I went into church that day, and I'm telling you, my eyes were open, but they were closed. They were open. But I wasn't seeing anything. I wasn't seeing anybody. I just wanted to see Jesus. Amen. I just wanted to see Jesus. And I walked into that church, and it was my Jesus and I. It was my Lord and I. As I walked into that church with all the confusion and contention and the carrying and all that was going on. And I walked in just my Jesus and I. Hallelujah. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? We need to get to that place where we are just blind to all that the enemy is doing and saying and showing us and just tuning. And so I just naturally close my eyes when I'm worshiping because I just want to see Jesus. And I'm telling you, heaven came down in that church that Sunday morning. Heaven came down because I connected. Uh, I don't know. I, I love to tell this story because it just take, takes me back to that time. Every once in a while, my phone will send these pop-up memories. You get that? Memories. And there was one that popped up this morning, and I was waiting to see all of it before I save it. And then I waited to the end, and then it, go, it was gone. And I can't find it again. But I, I wanted to recap that. So I, I, that Sunday... Um, heaven came down <clears throat> because you know <clears throat> I had church all by myself. The Lord just gave me the church for me. I had church all by myself. I don't know what was going on, but Jesus and I were just dancing and having a wonderful time. 
Oh, glory to God. Can somebody bless the Lord? It doesn't matter how you come into the house of God. It doesn't matter what problem you're having. It doesn't matter what you're going through. When you connect with God. Oh, my God. When you connect, because sometimes you sit beside some people that just, the devil just put them there. Just busy, busy, busy and distracting and all of that. But when you connect with God, you can have church. Amen. So just in case you see me close my eyes all the time, um, it's just because I want to see Jesus. Okay, you're not too happy with me, are you? I like to, you know, um, there are times when you just feel like you're alone. Amen. You're in a big crowd. You're in a big family. You're among your co-workers. And, and you just feel alone. You feel lost. Because it's only God who understands where you're at. It's only God who understands what's going on with you at that moment. And you may be smiling and you may be interacting and you're going through the motion. But only God knows. But you know, the, the important thing is that he knows. And so uh, what the Lord laid on me this morning um, is God is with you. God is with you. Tell someone God is with you. Hallelujah. Jesus knows all about your troubles. Hallelujah. God is with you because uh, um, that's a reminder because we know that. But there are times when uh, we're just at that, we're down in our spirit. Uh, we are at a crossroad. There are doubts and the, 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 the clouds of doubts overshadow us. Glory to God. But God wants to remind somebody today that I am with you. He is Jehovah Shammah. I am the Lord who is there. He is everywhere. Jehovah Shammah. He is with us. David um, stated very clearly that wherever he goes, he cannot go from the presence of God. If he makes his bed in hell, it doesn't matter where he is. It's in the psalm. We know it very well. He says, wherever I am, God is there. And so we have to be aware. We have to be cognizant. We have to be conscious that God is with us. He goes before us. He overshadows us. He's around us. He is with us. He's everywhere. So uh, we want to speak to our spirit this morning and command our spirit to be encouraged. Hallelujah. Command our spirit to rejoice. Let the praises of God go forth because we know we are not alone. For God is with us. God is with you this morning. Isaiah 4 to 1. I'll read a few verses from verse 10. Isaiah 4 to 1. It says, fear not. Can we read together? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I like to read from, I'm reading from the English um, Standard Version. So I think it's on the screen. Uh, let's read that again together. Fear not, for I am with you. Come on, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Glory to God. Uh, we have to understand uh, that, that God he has not called us to be fearful, but he has called us to fear him, to trust him, to reverence him. Hallelujah. Whatever we're going through, he's saying, I am with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can somebody bless the Lord? Fear not whatever it is that you are facing. God is saying, I am with you. Glory to God. Be not dismayed. Hallelujah. Why? For I am your God. Do you know the God that we serve? Do we stop? Do we pause? Do we take time out to understand the God we serve? The songwriter called the vision said, what a mighty God we serve. For angels bow before him. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. 
I listened to a message this week about the revelation and describing the throne of God and how the angels and the beasts and all of them bowed down and all day long is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody bless him. Glory to your name, Jesus. Do we understand who we serve? Do you understand that regardless of what situation you're in, God says, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For I am. He is the I am. He says, I am the great I am who was with Moses. The great I am who delivered the children of Israel. The great I am of the Old Testament. The great I am who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He says, I am your God. And that is why you should not fear. Uh, I'm just a little bit excited because I serve the great I am. I am excited because I have I am as my bodyguard. I have I am as my defense. I have I am as my attorney. Oh my God. Come on. God is with you. And he says, yes, yes, I will help you. Oh, glory to God. Uh, uh, um, he says, I am not just with you. I will help you. Call upon me. Are we calling upon God or are we too busy to find time to pray? Are we too busy to pray, brethren? He says, call upon me and surely I will answer you. And not only will I answer you, but I'm going to show off. I'm going to show off. Come on, somebody say, God, show off on me. Show off on me, God. Show off on me. For I depend on you. My hope is in you. My trust is in you. I fear you, Lord God. Come on, show off. Show off on me. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not of. Sometimes we do take the things that God does for us for granted. God moves and we don't understand that we could not have done this. We don't understand. If it had not been for God, it wouldn't be the way it is. It wouldn't turn out the way it turned out. Hallelujah. He says, yes, I will help you. Not only am I going to help you, I'm going to uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, my righteous right hand. He didn't even give us the left hand. He says, listen, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to bear you up. I'm going to hold you up with my righteous right hand. Oh, my God. What a God. What a God. He is with us. He is with us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, I was in a situation recently where we needed a bodyguard. I remember I was talking to Evangelist Bowman. I said, you know, we're going to need a bodyguard. And, and uh, we're trying to get a bodyguard. And, and she said, but you have one. You have one. All right. So when we went into this situation and the bodyguard was there and he was trying to usher me. I'm cool, man. I'm cool. I'm cool because I'm covered. Tell somebody I'm covered. I'm covered. Hallelujah. No harm, no evil can befall me. Neither can any plague come down my dwelling. For he has ordered his angels to keep charge over me. Hallelujah. Even the devil know the scripture. For the devil said to Jesus, just jump off this sneaker. You know God is going to catch you. You know the angel will catch you. Oh my God, have mercy. Listen to what God is saying, not what the enemy is saying, because the enemy is setting you up. You got to have a relationship with the Lord. You got to know God for yourself. Hello, in verse 11, he says, Behold, all those, read with me if it's, if it's there. Behold, all those who were incensed against you, who were mad with you, who, who wanted to hurt you, shall be ashamed and disgraced. 
they shall be as nothing and those who strive with you shall perish. The battle is not yours. We waste too much time trying to beat the air and fighting a, a spiritual battle with the carnal, with the flesh. But the Lord says it is not a natural battle. It is a spiritual warfare. And he says all those who are against you or incensed against you shall be ashamed. Your enemies will become your foot stool they will be disgraced they shall be as nothing Hallelujah. don't waste your energy don't waste your energy trying to fight your own battle God is saying stand still stand still stand still come on tell your neighbor stand still stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Whatever you are going through. You have been trying to fix it. And it's getting worse. Hallelujah. So turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. He says your enemies. Those who try to hurt you. Those who are fighting against you. Shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. And this is the mouth of the Lord. This is the word of the great I am. The most high God. You cannot fight against God. Man cannot fight against God. Man try to get up there before God. But you are no match for the Lord. It's, trying to, it's like trying to. To, to fight a baby. You are a baby. You are a weakling and helpless uh, in, in a situation. And you got to allow God to take over. Because God is. There is no match. There is no competition. There is no competition. Hallelujah. Because God is all powerful. He is almighty. He is Jehovah. He is a warrior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is a, a conquering savior. Uh, he is a, a Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. He's our protection. Hallelujah. He's a God of armies. He says the battle belongs to me. Just trust me. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Hallelujah. All those who seek the hurt of God's people will be annihilated. They will be completely destroyed. Hallelujah. Can you bless the Lord? Yes, we are in a battle. We are in a warfare. And we are kingdom warriors. Actively engaged. What are we engaged in? We are all engaged and very active and very busy. We don't have any time. We are all actively engaged. Maybe you're actively engaged in sleeping. I don't know. I think sleeping is a verb. Is it, teachers? Sleeping is a verb. So you're sleeping, you're doing something? You're actively sleeping? Oh my God, help us. The Bible says, awake. Awake those that sleepest and arise from the dead. Hallelujah. We are supposed to watch and pray. Hallelujah, for, for the coming of the Lord is near. There's work to be done. It's time to awake out of our slumber. We are kingdom warriors, actively engaged in battle, not sleep. Actively engaged. How do we do battle? How do we do battle? Thank you, Jesus. You see, when I ask the students a question and they're doing uh, their devotional response, and, and if, they, if I should ask the question, how shall we, uh, how are we kingdom warriors or how are we warriors? And if somebody give me the answer, we should be actively engaged in battle. I would say, that's not saying anything. Actively engaged in battle. What is that? What is that? How are we actively engaged in battle? How do we engage in battle? On our knees. Amen. We are on our knees, travailing. How many of us do warfare on our knees? If you do, get to your knees. If you do, get to your knees. Hallelujah. I was sharing with someone this morning. You're going to pray and set your time to pray. You set your time to pray. And you have all good intention. You make it out of the bed. Are you, you're going to pray. Oh, I'm so happy that I get up to pray. And then you just need to go in the kitchen to do something. 
Oh, you just need to do something. And you just need to do this. And you just need to do that. And I'm going to pray. And you still haven't gotten to pray. You still haven't gone on your knees. Hallelujah. It's a battle. It's a battle. And so when you make it on your knees, even there you're, you're in warfare. Even there the enemy is going to make sure you don't hear what God has to say. Battle. We got to fight to pray. Fight to read the word of God. Fight to make it to the house of worship. Are you with me, brethren? Yes. Hallelujah. It's a war that is going on. And so we have to be actively engaged. We have to be, un be, we have to be fully aware of the enemy's tricks and plans. How many of you fight to get to church? Well, you know, I can't make it today. But you know what? Um, send me the Zoom link. Send me a text. What is the Zoom link? Have mercy, Jesus. To go into the house of the Lord, the enemy doesn't want you to come in the house of God. Hallelujah. We have to be actively engaged. We have to be fighting. We got to keep pressing our way. But know that we are not alone. The enemy has already lost. You are in a battle. We are war. We're in a warfare. But the wonderful thing and the blessed assurance, we are on the winning side. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor we're on the winning side. Isn't that awesome? It doesn't matter how hot the battle seems. Uh, somebody said, I know the end of this story. I know how it ends. We are winners. We are conquerors. We are overcomers. And so we can rejoice while we're going through. Yes. Amen. Amen. Even through the tears, we can rejoice. You think Jesus didn't know that resurrection was coming? Do you think Jesus had any doubt that resurrection Sunday was coming? But while he was going through, it wasn't easy. While he was going through, it was painful. Am I right? Yes. So while you are going through, even though you know that God is with you, even though you know that Daniel's God surely will deliver, it's not easy. Tell somebody it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But I'm going through. I'm going through. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. I, I just wish I had some people who knew what I was talking about today. Yes. It's, not easy, it's not easy. But God is with you. Yes. God is with you. Yes. Glory to God. In verse 12, it says, you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing is repeated as a non-existent thing. You see, I, I, I put it in this version just so we can get it clearly. They, it's like they never existed. You get to a point in your life, uh, uh, in your situation, where you just think that this is the worst. Everything that happens to you, oh, well, this is the worst. Every time you come up on a mountain or you come up on a Red Sea or you come up on a difficult situation, it's like, this is the worst. How am I going to get through this? It's not how the children of Israel behave. As if God never did anything. As if he never proved himself. As if he never came through. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that it is going to pass. This too will pass. Come on, tell your neighbor. This too will pass. That thing that you're stressing over, this too shall pass. Uh, you don't look very convinced at all. Has he brought you through anything? Has he taken you through anything? Hallelujah. Can you look back and say, well, look where the Lord has taken me from. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my sick body. Hallelujah. He provided for me. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes we forget and we need to testify of the goodness of God. For David says, I've been young and I'm old. I've never, never, never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging bread. Claim that which is yours. Walk in victory. Walk in fulfillment. Walk in the fear of the Lord. God is with you. But you see, sometimes we live defeated lives because we don't recognize that God is with us. Amen. 
glory to God. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. When my daughter used to go to school, her father used to drive her to school. And then she didn't like that. She didn't like that. Why I can't have the freedom to go by myself? I think every parent gets to that point where the first time when that child has to go without you, uh, you probably pray all the way. That child is going to go without you for that first time. And her father would uh, walk behind her and, and peep and walk and peep to make sure she's okay. Amen. And so sometimes we don't realize that God is there. Uh, but there's a song that says, He was there all the time, waiting patiently in love. He was there all the time. So when you feel like you just can't navigate through these waters, you just can't make it, you just seem to be uh, uh, making uh, two steps forward and, uh, and one step backward, you just not seem to be moving, you're not getting anywhere, it's like you're on a treadmill. You could walk for an hour on the treadmill and you're in the same spot. You walk for two hours on the treadmill and you're in the same spot. And you say, you have gone two miles, but I'm in the same spot. Glory to God. And so we have to understand, hallelujah, hallelujah, that God is there. We have to recognize, we have to be conscious that he is there. He is with us, but we must acknowledge that he's there. We must acknowledge him. Uh, otherwise, we will lose out on the benefit of having him there. He says he was wait waiting patiently in line. God is not going to force himself on us, and he's going to allow us to, to seek him, to need him, to call upon him. Hallelujah. He promises to supply all our needs. Amen. Amen. Do we have any need? Do we have any need? But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And it's not everything will be added. You know, the Bible didn't say that. It's all these things that the scripture was referring to uh, uh, um, in the previous verses. Food, shelter, clothing, all these things. But we like to say all other things. We like to say all other things. But it says all these things that I've been talking about. I feed the birds of the air. I close the flower of the field. Uh, they have lack of nothing. How much more are you worth? All these things I will give unto you. And if he feels like, I'll also give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. The abundance, the overflow. God is with you. Come on, you're going to hold him to his word. The scripture that was read earlier in St. John is it St. John 1 and verse 1? Uh, um, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And made, became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is no longer here in the flesh. But he says, if I go, I'll send the comforter. And he will be with you. And he will guide you. He will lead you into all truth. Do you know you have the, the, the uh, existing, the perpetual uh, uh, presence, uh, the eternal presence of God's Holy Spirit with you? Ah. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows everything. We are never alone whether we are doing wrong or whether we're doing right, we are never alone. But you know, God did not come to condemn us. So even in our wrong, uh, as, as, as God was speaking to the children of Israel in this uh, um, Isaiah, uh, he was comforting them and letting them know that I am with you, regardless, regardless of the fact that sometimes you forget Sometimes you don't appreciate what I do. Sometimes you turn away from me. But I want you to know I'm here anyway because you are my children. Do you turn your children out of the house when they do wrong? Okay, that's a big question. But you're still there for them. Even if they're not in your house. Because your house is your sanctuary. 
Your house is your sanctuary. Your house is your safe place. So even if they are not physically, literally in your house, you're still watching over them. Amen. Hallelujah. There's not a night that you go to bed without thinking about them. And so how much more is our Heavenly Father going to be there for us even when we slip up, even when we mess up? Hallelujah. He says, I am with you. Glory to God. I am there. He tells the children of Israel, I'm Jehovah Shammah. I am the Lord who is there. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah, uh, uh, Jehovah, um, uh, 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 he he's, he's, he's all sufficient. El Shaddai. He's all sufficient. He's everything. Glory to God. Uh, you will, will go on. We can depend on God. We can trust His word. We can rest assured that His word is true. Can you imagine? The presence of God is with us. The presence of God, because He is His word. That has not changed. It's just that it's not flesh. The word is no longer flesh among us, but the word is spirit and it is life. Glory to God. And so when we have his word, that word have I hid in my heart? That word have I hid in my heart? Why is it so hard to read the word? How are we doing with reading through the Bible? We have um, started this many years ago. How many have read through the Bible even once? Even once. Don't put up your hand. Ah. We read this book in our school. The staff read this book some time ago about this person who read through the Bible. I think it's Charles Spurgeon um, who read through the Bible 200 times. Uh, we, we studied George Mueller, but I don't know if he's Charles Spurgeon, but you can look it up. Read the Bible 200 times in his lifetime. Wow, so that means when we think we read the word the Bible once for the year, oh, we think we accomplished something. We should read it several times for the year. Because when the word of God is in us, when the enemy brings his nonsense to us, the word of God just flushes it out. When, the, when the, the, our spirit takes in things that are ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, the spirit of God, we just regurgitate and bring it up. That's what the word of God does. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so when we have uh, uh, these plugs in our ears, listening to secular songs, secular music, our young people always have something in their ears. Uh, and things that you're watching and listening to. That is what is being infused in your spirit. So that's what is filling your spirit. So when is the time for the word of God, you're on a shutdown mode. You're on a shutdown mode because the word of God is going forth. You want to sleep. Oh, you're looking at the clock. This is just so boring. Because the flesh man is being infused. The flesh man is filled up with the filth of what the enemy has to say. So there's no room for the heart to be touched and for the heart to be pierced with the word of God. But thy word, thy word have I hid in my heart. Can you say it with me? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee because the word is there and at the right time the Holy Spirit will bring it out. So when the enemy comes in in his uh, disguise, the enemy comes in disguise and he tricks us and we fall for it because the word is not in our heart. When last have we read our Bibles? Now that we have the Bible on the phone, we don't even know where the hard copy is. People who stop buying the Bible, the best seller of or, or every year of all times is the Bible. Are we still purchasing the Bible? Are we still buying the Bible? We got to get the iPhone and the smartphone, but we're still not reading the Bible. My God, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God is there. He is with you. We turn over, we go over to Joshua. We go over to Joshua chapter 1. Glory to God. And I'll read a few verses. Um, you know, as after Moses died, Moses was taken up by God. And he asked, he, he uh, instructed, God instructed Moses.
to anoint Joshua and consecrate him before he died. Ah, glory to God. How many of you are preparing yourself to, to take over from your leaders? Your leaders speak to you and give you an assignment. And you fight and you fuss and you quarrel and you give argument. You know anyone like that? Okay. <laughs> Lord, help me. The leaders speak to you and you kick and fight and you blame the leader. The leader is just a mouthpiece. The leader is just a mouthpiece. Because the Lord instructed Moses, hallelujah, to um, select Joshua. Joshua was one of those who ministered to Moses, who was a leader and one of Moses' men that worked with Moses. And the Lord says, listen, you're not going to be here forever. Come on. You, you're, going to, you're not going to be here forever. Now it's time for you to train someone, build up someone. You have been pouring in and prepared that person to take over from you. Because God saw that Joshua had the right spirit. He had the spirit of leadership. And so as, as Moses, so Joshua waited patiently. He humbled himself and Moses presented him to the people and blessed him and commissioned him. So when I'm gone, we saw Bishop did that not too long ago. And he presented the person that, that when, when I, and he gave out, he did it publicly. He was preaching at another church and he said, well, this is who will take over that. And he had everything outlined. The Bible says so. Do it so that when you're gone, when you are transitioned, there's not chaos and confusion. Okay? So when your leader speaks to you and is pre prepping you and preparing you, come on, be a Joshua. Have the right spirit. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Be a Joshua. The Bible says he had the right spirit. And so uh, when Moses was taken away, then we see uh, um, Joshua uh, uh, is stepping up now. And there was a period, as you read the, the, the history surrounding this, after Moses passed, there was a little transition. There was a little uh, uh, period uh, where there was no leader active. Because that was a period of mourning. And then as Joshua prepared, just imagine you, you're going into Moses' shoes. Just imagine stepping into Moses' shoes. But guess what? You can't fit into Moses' shoes. You got to wear your own shoes. Wear your size. You are uniquely created. You are uniquely anointed and appointed for the service of the Lord. So you know, brethren, when you are called to represent the Lord, when you are called to do service for the Lord, it's not about you. It's not about you. It is about giving glory and honor to God. It is an honor to be called and to be used by God. It's not about your self-elevation. Am I worthy? Am I not worthy? Of course we're not worthy. But through Christ, I can do all things. For it is for him and to him and it's about him. And so Joshua would never fill Moses' shoes. But the people understood that Moses is no longer here. And this is whom God has appointed to lead you, to take up the leadership. And so... Just in case you had any doubt or any fear, just know that I am with you. Read with me from verse 5. No man shall be able, Joshua 1, 5 to 9. It says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Are you there with me? As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Don't you know the God of Moses is the same God you serve? You, say, you serve the same God of Joshua? Hallelujah. He says, as I, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. How awesome is that? Has God called you 
to an assignment, has God called you to do something that you do not see yourself fit or worthy of doing? God doesn't call you because you're qualified. He qualifies you. Amen. God calls you and he qualifies you. God doesn't call you because you're qualified, because you're smart and you're educated. He calls you because he sees that he can use you. Uh, when he called um, uh, Paul, when he called Saul, Saul was wretched. Saul was destroying the Christians. When God calls Saul, he, he, he wasn't being a nice man. But God says, listen, you know, I, I can turn you around that you, you have no idea to become what, the, the greatest apostle that ever walked this earth. Amen. Because he allowed God to use him. Uh, glory to God. Verse 6 of Joshua uh, 1. Be strong. Read with me. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. And this is coming from the promise that was made to Abraham. And we are descendants of Abraham through adoption. And so they had not yet reached the promised land. Moses did not make it over to the promised land. We know the story very well. He, he left them in the wilderness because of their rebellion. He lost out on the promise. And so now they still have not uh, reached the promised land to reap that which God had for uh, um, for ordained or promised to Abraham's descendants because these people, the children of Israel, were descendants of Abraham. But he said, Joshua, you, Joshua, will take them over. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you know you're supposed to take over from your leader and carry on the mission even greater and farther and wider and to bear more fruit because you have had that training and that experience? Ah, don't you know that? Greater things, remember. Greater things. Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples, greater things than what you have seen me do shall men do in my name. Are we taking the word of God seriously? God has empowered us and equipped us. We have the Old and the New Testament. We have uh, uh, the, the testimony of the saints. We have the Bible. They didn't have this full Word when Jesus is around. He says, greater than what you see is happening here shall men do in my name. God has called us to do great and mighty things through him. He says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Ah, they're still fighting over the land. Did you know that? Only, read verse 7. I love verse 7. Only be strong. And courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Hallelujah. And so the promise that was made to the children of Israel, that the land would be divided according to their tribe. It says, only be strong and very courageous. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, God is saying, be strong and courageous. Come on, tell your neighbor, be strong and courageous. Ah, but we must observe to do what God has commanded us to do. We must stay in the word for only then will we prosper. In verse 8, it is broken down in verse 8. Let's read together. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Okay, okay, hold on for a moment. Hold a moment. Do we want prosperity? Do we want answered prayers? Do we want our needs to be met? Uh, we want our children to be saved. We want souls to be saved. Oh, my God. But in order for all of that to be done, we must recognize that God with us, is with us and he wants us to take time out to acknowledge him. God wants us to take time out to acknowledge his presence. 
He is everywhere. He's always there. He's always there. Hallelujah. You look in the news and see all the destruction and see all that is happening. Ah, I was watching the news and it's showing this volcano that is erupting and belching. And there you see the fire and of the volcano that the drone is showing the picture in real time of the volcano. And then they're showing the northern lights in the background. And, and, and we're looking for the eclipse to, to come tomorrow. And there's the earthquake and the everything that is happening. The earthquake and the eclipse and, and the tsunami and, and the volcano and, and all that is taking place and all these phenomenal things that man has no power over. Oh, my God, help us. We want God to do so much for us. Spear us from, from this and that and, and, Lord, do this for me. And we have a, a, a list, a shopping list of all that we want God to do. But he says, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. We got to have the word in our hearts so we can spew out the word, that we can speak words of life, words of healing, words of deliverance. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. What does the book of Psalms say in verse 1? It says, blessed, blessed or blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor even sit in the seat of this. But his delight, his joy, his pleasure is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's when we're going to have good success. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. God is with you. He's there to help you. He's there to see you through. He's there to manifest his presence and his power. But we are just too busy to notice him. Hallelujah. We are too busy to acknowledge him. In verse 9, let's read verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I will say it again. What is it that you're fearful about? What is it that you're troubled about? What is it that keeps you up at night? What is it that is resting heavily on your mind? Have you ever been so tired? You want to sleep? You want to sleep? You're so tired. And you're just so happy for the bed. And you go into the bed and you can't find the sleep. The sleep, where is the sleep? The brain just won't shut off. The brain just won't turn off. You can't turn it off. You turn off the light. You put the pillow over your head. I mean, be careful you do that. Don't you, as long as you do it yourself, don't let anybody do it for you. You, the sleep eludes you. You can't sleep because whatever is resting on your mind, this thing is on my mind. I can't fix it. I don't have the answer. I'm troubled. I'm anxious. I'm fearful. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Go in Jesus' name. When God calls you and gives you an assignment, he goes with you. He goes before you. He sends his angels to encamp round about you. His presence is with you. Pastor shared um, about, or I share, we share. When he was called to go pastor, this church he would not go. He did not want to go. He was a Jonah at one time. He would not go. He did not listen to the Moses 
The pastor put the key down there because pastor wouldn't take the key for the church. And the pastor left it and gone about his business. And I guess he realized I can't leave the key over there. He picked up the key. But you see, when he picked up the key, he said, yes, Lord. Amen. He said, I, he could have said, I told you, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I told you. So now it's your responsibility. But when he picked up the key, he said, yes, Lord. And so he says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For many years, he wore the title of leader because they never wanted to give him title or recognize him. And that's another story by itself. He was leader until the bishop found out that he's the one been leading this ministry unrecognized, unnoticed. And, um, but look where we are later. Look where we are these many years later. Look where we are these many years later. God's promises uh, that he will go with you. He will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. I remember the days when we came here and we had to start over. Establish our life in Jamaica. We had to start over. It just looked like such an undaunting task. Um, we don't know anybody. No one knows us. What are we doing here? We already had our life. But I remember as we sought the Lord about starting a ministry. Uh, that same pastor, that same pastor who gave him the key to go, that same pastor many years later ended up back in our, uh, our home in Jersey as our guest was visiting with us in Jersey. And he even consecrated the basement because we were going to start service in the basement. And he consecrated the basement. But he didn't get past the basement, because we didn't start the service in the basement. But nevertheless, he consecrated the ministry. Amen? Because the ministry would start in New York, in Flushing. And then, um, but God promises you, where he leads, I will follow. As the Lord calls you, say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know. I don't even know why you have called me, but I will obey. How many of you are saying that today? I will obey, for it is an honor to be called by God. It's an honor to be chosen by God. Glory to God. I thank God as much as Pastor didn't want to take this up. And in those days, I didn't have much faith that this was going to work out. No, I'm not no pastor's wife. No, well, wrong couple. But I thank God that over the years, we have been able to let that pastor know how much he has impacted our lives and how much the decision that he took to obey God when, when, so, when, when, uh, Samuel, when Samuel went to anoint the next king, the future king of Israel, and he looked at all those hefty, strong, muscular, soldier-like men, warrior-like men, and as, as, as Jesse, no, not Jesse, uh, um, yes, Jesse, as Jesse's son passed the prophet Samuel, he says, no, no, the Lord didn't choose that one. The Lord didn't choose that one. The Lord did not choose that one. And I don't know where he found you to say the Lord chose you. The Lord chose you. The Lord chose you. And so we were able to go back and tell him in his declining years how much he has impacted our lives. You got to turn around and say thanks. Come on. Remember where you're coming from and turn around and say thanks. You made an impact. You made an impression. You made a difference in my life. And what an awesome opportunity when we get the chance to do that. Glory to God. He is Elroy. He is Elroy. He says, I see you. 
El Roy means Jehovah, El Roy. He sees you. Come on. Somebody say, God sees me. He sees me. He knows my name. He created me. He ordained me. He appointed me. I am a child of God. Ah, help us, Jesus. Jehovah Rohi, God the shepherd. Hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. In Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Glory, hallelujah. He has his rod. He has his rod to do the correction. He has his rod to beat and to drive away. He has his rod to protect us. What does the rod do? It disciplines, it beats, it corrects. And it drives away the enemy and his staff to guide us. And to lead us. It doesn't matter where you are. Glory to God. It doesn't matter where you are. Come on, stand to your feet, everyone. It doesn't matter where you are. He says, I am with you. His presence go before you. Hallelujah. And Jesus has commanded us. Are we warriors here today? Are we warriors today? Are we bearing fruit to God's kingdom? Are we doing the work of the evangelist? Are we preaching in season, declaring in season and out of season? We don't need a mic to, to declare God's word. We just need a heart for God. We just need to have salvation. And as you save you, you can tell someone your testimony. Have you answered the call? He says, go in all the world and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He says, teaching them to observe, to observe all things. Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. What is it that God has commanded you to do? And lo, here it is again. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Glory to God. The songwriter says, though none go with me, still I will follow. If your mother doesn't want to come, you got to leave your mother. Your father doesn't want to come. Your children don't want to come. Your spouse don't want to come. You got I will follow Jesus. Follow, follow. His presence is always with us. We're never alone. God spoke this to my spirit because someone needs to hear it. And I preach all these messages to myself first. So as, as the messages are preached to me, sometimes I, I struggle with them because the Lord is speaking to me. He's preaching to me. He's ministering to me. Amen. And so sometimes there's a conflict because God is sitting you down and preaching to you. That's what preparing a message is all about, you know. God is preaching to you. So I, I am receiving what God is saying to me. Okay. But he could have left it there. So he wants someone else to hear it. Amen. So whatever you're facing right now, that it seems bigger than you, God is saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I, 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 I see you. I see you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Glory to God. I see you. Isn't that awesome to know that God sees me? Glory to God. He's El Roy. I see you. Come on. Tell your neighbor God sees you. He knows what you're going through. He understands your doubts. He understands your fears. He sees your tears. He sees that difficult situation that you can't navigate through. You don't see the answer. You don't see the answer. You don't see a way out. But he says, I see you. I see you. And you know where that story comes from. That story comes from Hagar, Abraham's concubine. 
Sarah's maid. He had a child with her because they didn't obey God. They didn't obey God. They didn't wait on God. They, they tried to help out God. And so we are trying to fix the situation, and we are trying to help out God. And God is saying, come on, just give me a chance. I spoke with someone yesterday, and I said, okay, God is saying, enough now. Just, just give him a chance. Just let go. Let go and let him have his way. Because you're getting in the way. You're getting in the way of God's manifestation. He wants to do it. God wants to do it, but you're trying to fix it. If you're listening, you hear God's voice. Amen. And so, we are called to go out. Go out. And he says, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 and verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... You shall not be burnt. <laughs> ah, he's the fourth man in the fire. Nor the flame will scorch you. <laughs> it's okay. You're going through the fire. He's the fourth man. He will never leave you. He loves us. He comes to comforts us. We are his children. <laughs> we are his children. He's a loving father. We are the sheep of his pasture. He provides for us. He watches over us. You don't see your way out. But he says, I see you. I see you. He's your shelter. He's your wheel in the middle of the wheel. He promises to be with you in the fire. Hallelujah. He's El Shaddai. He's all sufficient. Whatever you're going through, he is there. In the name of Jesus, will you receive that today? Will you receive that today? Got you any rivers that seem so uncrossable? Got you any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible. He'll do for you what no other poor can do. Is God speaking to somebody today? Got you any river? That seems so uncrossable. Got you any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought. Impossible. He'll do for you what no other poor can. We're going to do that one more time. Got you any rivers that seem so uncrossable? Got you any mountain you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible. He'll do for you what no other poor can do we have to believe for the impossible brethren some time ago an unsaved was saying to me and be careful or you receive what the unsaved say in your spirit the unsaved said to me like you are going through so much and is, you're at the, the river the river is before you and you don't even have a boat 
He says he's going to take you through, but you don't even have a boat to take you through. You don't even have anything to get, but he does need a boat. He does need a boat. He specializes in things that seem impossible. So when you're facing your Red Sea, when you're facing your river, <laughs> there is no boat. There is no boat, but you don't need a boat when you have God. God specializes in things taught impossible. He'll do for you what no other poor can do. Hallelujah. Let us pray. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you to receive him as your Lord. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sins right now. His arms are wide open to receive you. And whatever it is that you're facing that is bigger than you right now, it's not bigger than God. God is able. Glory to God. God is able. Just call upon him right now. He says, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Do you want to see some great and mighty things from God? Hold him to his word. Hold him to his word. Father, we thank you, God.